Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome. So today we have the first, well, actually these two boxes are from November. I was about to say the first December boxes. I'm recording this on the fourth, so that would have been a miracle, but no. <laughs> I have the Afterlight November and the Illumicrate November boxes to unbox today. They both arrived around the same time, so I figured we'd just do them in one video. And I'm actually super excited about, well, I'm, I'm always excited to open my boxes, my bookish boxes, but this time I'm even more excited because I'm currently repping for Illumicrate. So they actually sent me their main box so that I could show it to you, which is cool. I mean, I would have bought it anyway, but <laughs> but also that means I gotta do a disclaimer. So thank you to Illumicrate for sending me the box so that I could review it for you guys. My opinions are always my own. And also I have a discount code with them now, at least for the next couple of months. It's in the description box. You can find it under the support my channel section. I believe it gives you 5% off of like, what is it, three and six month subscriptions? Or something like that. I don't gain any monetary from it, like any monetary compensation from it. It is just for your benefit. So use it if you want to, use to, or don't use it if you don't want to. Yes, but thank you for sending me this. I'm so excited. So we're gonna open this first. We're gonna save Afterlife for After and uh, let's get started, shall we? The only thing I know about this box is that the book, I know the book, which book it is, and I've seen that the top of it is black. And that's pretty much it. I think I've managed to avoid spoilers aside from that. So we will see. Should I zoom you guys in a little bit? Yeah. All right. Or maybe that's too close. Now we'll do it like this. So we have our box. It says anti-hero. So this is our theme for November. I think if you know the cover of the, the original cover for the book, you can kind of guess what book it is because it's very heavily inspired by the cover. Let's start with, is that a mug? Let's save this for a little bit. I forgot that there was a mug. Let's open this first. Hang an ornament. Inspired by Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. A book that I have actually read. So they usually do ornaments actually for like Christmas month or the, the month or they send them in November because November boxes often arrive at the end of November. So that's perfect time for Christmas. So this is what it looks like if it would be still. <laughs> this is what it looks like. We have Bone Dog, which if you've read Nettle and Bone, you would understand. What else is there? A little bit, like a little bit of a hint of all the characters that you follow in this group in the, in the book as well. So that's very cute. It's literally called Bone Dog Ornament. It says artwork by The Bitter Season at The Bitter Season. I will make sure to leave links to all of the artists in the description box down below. Adorn your shelves or your tree with this delightful ornament featuring the best bone dog from Nell and Bone. Bone dog is adorable, even if he's not super soft. He's adorable. So I found my other two ornaments, but I don't really know where to put them right now. So I'll figure that out though. Then we have this, whatever it is. Guess we'll have to open a seat. Okay. Oh, it's one of these bags. Do I really unwrap it? I think it's a bag of some kind or something. What is it? Oh, it is one of these bags. Yeah, I don't use these. I use like canvas tote bags when I go shopping. So also, I think the pattern is a little bit much for me personally, but I could see other people using this. I cannot tell what it's inspired by though. I do not know. Night Market. Oh, so it's, oh, the Stardust Thief. Night Market foldable bag. So it says Night Market foldable bag designed by Clara McAllister, an incredibly useful item. This foldable bag with a design inspired by the Stardust Thief is great for any shopping trips. So I can see people using this also because you can fold it and it doesn't take up a lot of space, but personally, I just like to use my canvas bags. I'm very, like, not very colorful outside of my office, um, so I just tend to not really use a lot of patterns and stuff. How do I fold a bag in there? <laughs> but I've had one of these before. I gave it to my mom, and she uses that one, so maybe I'll give her this one as well. It's a bit, it's a bit bigger than the other one as well, I think. I hope I managed to do it right, but, like, I don't know. Okay, so... A foldable bag. Very useful indeed. But anyway, then we have, this is so funny, we have Gideon the Ninth uh, Middle Bookmark, not bookmarks, bookends. It's funny because Fairy Loot did, did a couple, did a set not too long ago. I think it was in like September or something. And 
it's funny because there was a flaw on them. And on top of that, they were also white, right? Which, the design is cool, but the choice of making them white and then with the flaw on them is just kind of funny. I know Illumicrate, the team, loves the locked tomb. Of course it would have to be black, you know? That just makes more sense. What does it say? One flesh, one end. Yes. So if you can see the motif, I hope. I hope it's visible. It says one flesh, one end up here. And then it's like a door, which makes sense because it's the lock tube. So it makes sense. These are cool. These are very cool. The Locked Tomb book ends, designed by Chloe at No One Designs. In case your books in the Locked Tomb with these bookends inspired by Gideon the Ninth, which is perfect. So I can use them for my Locked Tomb set that is literally right there. They'll go perfectly together. Yes, these are great. These are pretty good. I would have thought that the fairy loot ones would have been black as well. I thought it was an interesting choice that they made them white because like the the book series just has like a darker vibe to them. So, or to it, it makes sense that they're black. It makes sense. Everyone wears a lot of black clothes, for example. Black makeup, it's, it's a whole thing. The last thing we have is intermission. So I think this is, what's it called? Is it a murder butt? Is it a murder butt mug? Murder butt is pretty cool, by the way. They're novellas written by Martha Wills. And, and yes, it is murder butt. Sanctuary Moon. <laughs> I love that. So it's a bit of a different one to the others, the other mugs we have, but I think this might also be the only sci-fi one, actually. So I love Rosie Thorne's art. You can see Murderbot sitting right there watching its favorite TV show, and it's just, they're just sitting in there binging while things are going absolutely crazy outside their window, but they do not give a single ish. <laughs> Pretty cool. So... I really enjoyed, especially the first one, I'm on the third one right now, I think, where that's the next one for me. The first one was very, very cool. The second one a little bit more slower to me, but it's also nice because you get to know Murderbot a little bit better. There was just another robot that was taking up a lot of space in that story. So we'll see what happens in the third one, but Murderbot might be like definitely one of my favorite robots. Yes. Pretty cool. Pretty cool mug. What does it say? Intermission mug, designed by Rosie Thorns 88 our next mug features our favorite misanthropic, 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 I don't know, I don't know, a sec unit from the Murder Bud Diaries. <laughs> what is missing? I need to google that word. I like that, the rise and fall of Sanctuary Moon, that is so cute. <laughs> that is so cute. Always save these boxes, by the way. My chair is making noise, ignore it, but I always save these boxes, always. I have like a whole shelf in my wardrobe just for boxes for mugs from Illumicrate. Oh, you never know when you're gonna need them. And then we have the book. So, a bit thinner than I thought it was gonna be, but let's have a look-see. All right, it came with a, ooh, it came with a transparent dust jacket. Ooh, very nice edges. Okay, okay, so we have Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I really desperately want to read this book. I think this is, isn't this a redesigned cover, like a fully redesigned cover? Acetate jacket. Maybe I can't remember what the actual cover looks like, but you see like it has a transparent jacket. So we got all the birds and then there's artwork on the naked cover underneath. So when it comes together, it looks like this, but I think... I cannot recall what the original cover looks like. I'm gonna put this here and then the original cover is there so you can compare. I'm gonna have to wait until afterwards, that's just how it is. But I should be scared. There are stories about Starling House, the kind people only tell at night, half whispered under the hum of the porch light. But in the dream, I don't hesitate. I'm the dream, I'm home. No, in the dream, I'm home, not I'm the dream. <laughs> that would be a bit much. <laughs> oh, it smells like new book, I love it. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this is creepy. Oh, this is creepy. I love it. So front of the house, yes, this is what it looks like. And then in the back, they have a graveyard in the backyard. A grave backyard. A back graveyard? I don't know. This reminds me of Sims houses. Because people often put their, like if you have, if you if your Sims end up dying, you can put their urns in the backyard and they'll make a graveyard. That's what it reminds me of. Plus it's a Victorian, it's always a Victorian house. They're haunted, I swear. <laughs> anyway, edges, 
look so so good look at these edges oh they look so crisp and clean very nice that is like that is so crispy so crispy yes i don't know i feel like i've seen some blurred edges over the last well maybe not these digit it's they're digitally printed i just feel like it very much like depends on the motif that they put on the edges because it can i don't want to compare too much to other ones but like there's definitely a thing you know but crispy nice crispy motifs like this on edges oh so good so good so we have end pages that look like this. I suppose these are our two characters. Is he a starling? Because he's inside of the gate, I think. Or is the uh, No, he's definitely inside the gate because there's a starling house over here. They look like they don't like each other. That's fine. That's cool. Same end pages in the back. Not reversed this time. I'm guessing it's because it's a starling house. So that would be a bit awkward. <laughs> Usually if they do the same motif in the front end pages, they'll reverse it for the back ones. We have like little dots of foil as well on the naked cover if you can tell. There's like little gold dots. Just a nice little touch as well. I think, I think I've said this before. I love a good foil motif on the naked cover, but like ever since they started really putting a lot of effort into the art they put on the naked covers, I'm all for this. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. It's nice to get some variety still, like don't get me wrong, um, but it's just, nice to see it's really nice to get like a whole oh, yes so also these are funny i know they're not necessarily for everyone i think it's a it's a cool touch i liked it when they did it with a marvelous light as well i think it's not necessarily a feature that works for every book so they have to be a little bit picky about which ones they use it for but i think it works for this one I think it's quite cool for this one. As for our synopsis. Oh, it's even lined up so it's not like on top of him. I see what you did. Nobody in Eden remembers when Starling House was built, but the town agrees it's best to let this ill-omened mansion and its last lonely heir go to hell. Stories of the house's bad luck, like Good China, have been passed down the generations. Opal knows better than to mess with haunted houses or brooding men, but when an opportunity to work there arises, the money might get her brother out of Eden. Starling House is uncanny and full of secrets, just like Arthur, its heir. It also feels strangely, dangerously, like something she's never had, a home. Yet Opal isn't the only one interested in the horrors and the wonders that lie buried beneath it. Sinister forces converge on Eden, and Opal realizes that if she wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. Even if it involves sticking up her family's ugly past to achieve a better future, she'll have to go down, deep down beneath Starling House, to claw her way back to the light. I've heard that this book is really good, so I'm excited. I think the house is also sentient, but don't quote me on it. I think that might be a thing though. So we have an acetate jacket full color printing on the hardback by Magdalena. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce that last name. Again, they're linked to in the description box. Digitally printed edges from the publisher. Good choice, Tor, very good choice. And end paper work by Nier for Z. All exclusive. Very cool. This is a nice addition. A very nice addition. No signature. Well, that's, that's okay. For my brothers. Oh, that's cute. Oh, dear reader, but there is a bound in letter. And I don't know if that's like a standard thing or if it's an Illumicrate thing, but there it is. So, very cool. Yeah, that's nice. Can I, where can I put it so you can see it? Ugh, what did I just hit? I'm sorry, love to mug. I didn't mean to do it. I did not mean to do it. We're gonna put her right there. Favorite item? I mean, the mug, actually. Also the bookends. I think it was a good box. I know that four items is like, I think it's a standard for Illumicrate by now anyway. The ornament is a little bit of a smaller item, but then again, we did get bookends and a mug, so I think it adds up to me at least. But yeah, pretty cool box. I think I'm gonna give that one to my mom. <laughs> she'll make some, or she, she'll get some use out of it for sure. So let's move on to Afterlife, which I have right here. Where's my scissors? All right, and this is a heavy one. And is that a, is that a book jacket? That's just lying on there. Why is it so heavy? I don't, what's going on with this? What's going on with this box? Anyway, we have our box. Uh, uh, spoiler card is, is on the move. I don't know what, um, I don't think there's like necessarily a theme for the afterlife boxes. So we're just gonna go in. It's cool though with the flamingos. We love the flamingos. We're just gonna, let's go with this. <gasps> 
I'm sorry, I just noticed. <laughs> I don't know if I've, well, I have said before, but like, you know how you can't pick a favorite book as a reader? I feel like you really can't, but like, for me, I say three different ones, and then usually the third one will kind of change, but two of them is Aquamath and then Pride and Prejudice. I love Pride and Prejudice. This is, this is Pride and Prejudice inspired. <laughs> I'm obsessed. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. I'm so happy they made it Pride and Prejudice inspired. Oh, I would have been a bit like, because it's the only B format jacket, the fabric jacket. It's for the book. I'll show you once I have that unwrapped and everything. But um, you basically put it inside of the jacket and then you can read it without scratching the cover. So I have several for Royal Hardbacks, which is this size, but none for B format. So I would have been a bit sad if it was inspired by the monthly book because I haven't read it. And I don't know if I like it, but this is Pride and Prejudice. Ride or die. <laughs> like, oh, I love it. You have bewitched me, body and soul. At least he says that in Pride and Prejudice. Maybe it's also from, I, I don't think so, because that's Pembroke. <laughs> Let's have a look. Modern, no, that's not it. Bewitched book jacket. Protect your book with a stunning book jacket inspired by Pride and Prejudice. Carmen Di Mauro designed it. I love it. I love it with my whole heart. This is great. Oh, yes. <laughs> my problem is though that she doesn't want to stand on her own. So I'm going to put her right here. And I know you can't see her. But she's literally just falling down. So I can't really do anything about it. Then we have... We're going to wait with that one. Oh, we're going to wait with that as well. We have this, which is so heavy. What is it? Why is it so heavy? Why does it not want to... Everything's falling, falling down. It's a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> they really said, listen, this is our last box with items. So we're going to give you something huge. A thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. And I think that's the motif. It's a bookcase. It is a very, very colorful bookcase. Oh, that is cute. I adore these. Oh, and then little like things on it as well. I adore the puzzles. I rarely ever have time to do them, but I adore them nonetheless. And then it's also shaped like a book, so you can have it on your bookcases too. The Modern Romance Bookcase, 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> that is so great. Love the colors as well. So colorful, which is great for a jigsaw puzzle. Obviously. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to figure out where everything goes, especially with, with a thousand piece. The last time? No, not the last time. I haven't checked the last time. The first time I got a jigsaw puzzle from Illumicrate, I put it together and I was missing one piece. <laughs> it's been bothering me since. <laughs> so I'll have to find time soon to actually do the puzzle so that I can be like, if I'm missing a couple of pieces so I can write them like, it's it's not, it's not <laughs> complete. Well, it's completed, but to my best abilities. Um, Cause I'm missing some pieces. So we have the romance bookcase puzzle. That is that is awesome. That is so awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Artwork by Olivia Gibbs, designed by Jane Tibbetts, also known as Chatty Nora. Put together this 1000 piece puzzle that includes many hidden knots to some of her favorite romance books. How many can you spot? Oh gosh, um, probably, probably none. I mean, these could be like everything. There's a camera, a black cat, a hedgehog, a typewriter, a pair of ice skates. Is that from Luke of w with Love? I would love for that to be from Luke of with Love. I think a lot of these are probably inspired by some of their the the books they've done. So this is a cool item to kind of end off uh, the Afterlight items with. So that is awesome. That is that is great. <laughs> I love that. That's gonna be my romance shelf as well. I need to reorganize my bookcases. I need more room for my romance books. We'll, we'll figure it out. But anyway, lovely, lovely. I guess it's stand over there on the black shelf. Then we have our author letter, which has a super cute motif. Like what the heck? Adorable. Love the style. This is great. And if you want to read the back, you can pause the video and do so right here. I'm gonna save it until afterwards. Decided a long time ago that I was never going to read those out loud on the uh, in the videos because I stumble on words all the time. <laughs> or do I stumble over them? Anyway, you get my point. So we have our book, which very much has a redesigned cover, which I'm very happy for because um, the original cover, not my thing at all. So let us have a look, shall we? We have it's called Second Chances in Newport Stephen. Look at this color scheme. Oh. So quickly show to original cover, new cover. 
You see the difference is huge. I, yes. This is much more up my up my alley. Oh, cute! Well, this is a vibe. This is such, it has a bit of like a, there's a bit of like a retro feel to it. I don't know, or just like port beach bar vibe to it. Does that make sense? So you see we have like this like, um, there's like a lighting effect up here. And then on the edges, you have the same kind of lighting effect, but with, what is that, a flamingo? Is it a flamingo? Yes, and palm tree. Yes, so this is cool. I like these edges. I think they're cool. Also because like they do have that bleed effect, that lighting, that these kind of like neon lights have. It, like a, a bleed effect, you get what I mean? The back looks like this. It says the Thirsty Manatee. So I'm guessing that's the name of the bar that... Well that makes sense, the whole like port beach or port bar. Beach bar? Yeah. It makes sense. Oh, I also just only noticed that there's a drink right there. I think I'm onto something with this. <laughs> I feel like I'm right about this. So we have a manatee here, foiled onto the naked cover, which is so cute. Oh, that's very, very, very adorable. And there's a signature by our author, whose name is TJ Alexander. So we have a signature right there. I think it might be digital. Yes. I'm pretty sure it is, also because this book has definitely not been opened. Oh, blue edges at the top, blue edges on the bottom. Kind of like an indigo color to the naked, or the naked cover is indigo. This sunset vibe is stunning. Stunning. Beautiful. Jacket illustration. Oh, cool. We'll go through that in a second. But second chances in uh, Newport Stephen. Our synopsis is as follows. Eli Ward hasn't been back to his suffocating hometown of Newport Stephen, Florida, in ages. Post-transition and sober, he's a completely different person from the one who left years ago. But when a scandal threatens his career as a TV writer and comedian, he has no choice but to return home for the holidays. Oh, so it is like a holiday book. Like a, like a Christmas- oh, that's why they have like Christmas decor. I only just noticed. <laughs> he can only hope he'll survive his boisterous, loving, but often misguided family and hide the fact that his dream of comedy success has become a nightmare. Just when he thinks this trip couldn't get any worse, Eli bumps into his high school ex, Nick Wu, who's somehow hotter than ever. Divorced and in his 40s, Nick's world revolves around his father, his daughter, and his job. But even a busy life can't keep him from being intrigued by the reappearance of Eli. Against the backdrop of one Weird Floridian Christmas, the two must decide whether to leave the past in the past or move on together. So, his daughter. So I'm guessing. So I'm guessing that is the daughter right there. Okay, so we have a little bit of like single parent. A single parent who's not young anymore. It's always nice seeing uh, the characters that don't necessarily, for me at least like age-wise, I'm I get a little bit tired of reading about the start 20s characters all the time. It's cool seeing someone who's a bit older. And a tiny redhead man as well. I approve. Anyway, this is so cute. This is adorable. And is it like a Christmas book? Cause like, maybe this is just like, <laughs> maybe this is like a Nordic thing, but like, <laughs> there's snow outside right now. <laughs> it is cold. So I'm like, is that, is that Christmas in some places? <laughs> <laughs> I know that the climate is different in other places, like I'm not, I know. It's just, uh, whenever I get like confronted with it, I'm like, this is so weird. <laughs> anyway, excited- oh there's even a coconut tree with coconuts. Cool. But excited to read this at some point. Love that they did a fully uh, redesigned cover because my gosh, I was sorry. I'm just not a fan of the original cover at all. This is an exclusive B format hardback that has all exclusive cover artwork done by KF13, no, KF1N3, designed by No One Designs, stenciled edges designed by No One Designs, foil design on the hardback done by Pina Pali, and a digital signature. And there's an author letter. The illustration is done by Grey Sky Luna. And that is this one. So, super cute. Let's put it right there. They even fit together, like, color-wise. Probably not vibe-wise. No. <laughs> I don't think so. But, like, color scheme-wise, I would say, yeah, they could kind of go together a little bit. <laughs> anyway, so that is, uh, that is it for this unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it was pretty, uh, I'm happy with the, I'm happy with the items. I mean, aside from the bag, but that's just like a me thing, so I'll probably pass it on to my mom. Ow. But the rest of the items, 
definitely very excited for them. Super excited to read the books as well. I think they're both gorgeous and stunning. But let me know your thoughts down below. And um, that's the last... <coughs> rude. That's the last Afterlight box unboxing afterlight unboxing with items at least so there'll still be some on the channel now and then but there'll be a little bit fewer maybe i don't really there because they've started doing them monthly and i'm gonna start being a little bit pickier with which uh which books i want and they don't come with items anymore either so we'll still do them now and then with uh, like at the same time as I unbox their main box, but there'll be a little bit fewer, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> but it was super nice getting that item as like the last one in an afterlife box. I think that was a nice touch, so yeah. That's about it for today though. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this from me, but also all the other booktube stuff, so readathons and vlogs and wrap ups and all the, like all of it, we do that all all of it over here so if that's of any interest to you definitely consider sticking around by clicking on the subscribe button however i'm gonna leave you to it now so i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you all in the next one bye bye oh, you know,